already from the things that the ladies have shared about their mothers and the young people. Oh my, my goodness. It's just, it's overwhelming. Just the acknowledgement that the Lord has for each one of us as a mother. And like what Maria shared, you know, not all, not all of us may be physical mothers, but motherhood enco encompasses so much more than just giving birth to a baby. It talks about the heart of a nurturer and someone that cares. And so, you know, maybe you are not even married yet, or maybe you're going to be married, or you're going to have a baby, or, or whatever your situation might be. Today we celebrate you because the Lord's heart is for you. That is his heart. And, um, you know, they say the closest thing next to heaven is mother. So um, we can believe that this morning. But also I just wanted to also say, if you didn't get the opportunity to share today about your mother, I know that you have a lot of things in your heart that you want, would want to share. So you have the opportunity today, maybe you're going to be spending time with your mother. So you still have the opportunity to go to her and tell her how much she means to you and what a blessing she's been in your life. There's some of us that are, it's a little bit more difficult to share than there are for others, but it's kind of neat to see them put the young people on the spot, huh? Because you never know what's going to come out of you until you get in that spot. So I'm hoping that, that God, you're hearing my prayer today <laughs> about that. So uh, first of all, I want to just say that the title of my message today is A Surrendered Heart. To me, that speaks of motherhood. It speaks to me of parenting, of men and women who have placed their lives in the hand of God. And it's not just a one-time thing. We have to constantly surrender our hearts to the Lord. Amen? And he is just so faithful when we do that to uh, surrender to him. But I want to read a, little, a couple little stories about, these are both about little boys. A little boy was attending his first wedding. After the service, his mother asked him, Son, do you know how many women a man is allowed to marry? Sixteen, the boy responded. His mother was shocked. What do you mean, sixteen? It's easy, the little boy said. All you have to do is add it up like the pastor said. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. <laughs> <coughs> And then this is little boy's story, too. A mother put her son to bed on the eve of his fifth birthday. She was trying to communicate that birthday idea to him. Kevin, she said, this is the last night of your fourth night. Do you understand that? Kevin was ready to communicate with his hands. For a full year, he had shown people four fingers for his four years. And now he was ready to add a thumb. Seeing his four fingers, his mother nodded and said, When you go to sleep tonight, you'll still be four years old. But do you know how old you'll be in the morning when you wake up? Kevin nodded enthusiastically, added his thumb to his four little fingers and said, Tomorrow I'll be a handful. <laughs> So for all the mothers who have had their hands full at one time or another, we celebrate you today on this special occasion of Mother's Day. Today we celebrate motherhood, not just physical, but those who nurture and care and have the qualities and spirit of the love that is displayed by the heart of God. Um, our verse today is found in Psalms 1914. This is probably my favorite verse in the Bible, and it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And so I want to just pray that over all of us this morning. So if you just want to close your eyes, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know, there's a lot of pressure in the world today on motherhood. There's a lot of pressure on womenhood. There's a lot of things that are coming against us. And, you know, I would say, especially if you're a Christian, 
because we know in the word that we're going to suffer persecution for the name's sake of the Lord. And so many times as mothers who know the Lord and believers, we're not only bombarded by the things of society, of how you should dress, how you should look, how you should measure up, but a lot of times we're even ridiculed for our testimony and our life for the Lord. And when we take a different stand than what this world takes, a lot of times we become kind of the, um, what it was, uh, the, the, the uh, detestables or <laughs> whatever, deplorables. But I just want to encourage you today that you're doing a good job, that God sees your heart and he sees your desire to pursue him and to lift up that godly standard that needs to be presented in the world. And so um, today we're going to look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. And when I started to even look to the scriptures on this, I thought, you know, sometimes it's kind of intimidating to look at Mary's life because we know that Mary, um, in our eyes, I believe she was had that surrendered heart and she was a good, good woman of the Lord, even though she was young. And so the scripture verse is found in Luke 1, and it's verses 26 to 38. And it, maybe we'll go ahead and stand. That way we can kind of shake ourselves a little bit. Maybe we're getting a little bit, I don't want anybody nodding off, especially me. <laughs> but it's talking here about Christ's birth announced to Mary. And it says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Okay, you can be seated. But it speaks about finding favor. And the Lord, as we yield our lives to him, he wants to display and he wants to pour out favor in our lives. He also wants to let us know that there's nothing impossible with him. And as mothers... A lot of times things happen in our life or in the life of our children that almost seem an impossibility. But God wants to tell us today that we are continue to contend for what God wants to do in each one of our children's lives and contend knowing that nothing is impossible for God. So maybe your children aren't with you here today. Maybe your children aren't following the Lord. But the word of the Lord is encourage you today to keep praying, keep believing for them because nothing is impossible with God. So history tells us that Mary was young, she was poor, and of course she was a female. And in those days, it was even probably more unsuitable in the eyes of people that a woman could be used mightily by God and that God was going to use her God was looking upon Mary's heart and her submission to the will of the Father. And the things that it took from her was that she really needed to be obedient to what the Lord was saying and trust that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. And also 
that he would, in a sense, kind of straighten out the road that she was going to travel ahead. Because I, she knew that there were going to be, I mean, she wasn't married, even though she was betrothed to be married. She knew that there would be people that would talk disgracefully about her. She knew that there would be pain in her submitting to the Lord's will for this small child. I thought about, um, <clears throat> because I'm probably because they had the scriptures and Mary knew the word of the Lord. I wonder how many other, uh, you know, young women at that time that knew God's word also wondered, could it be me that God would use? So Mary was very chosen, but yet she knew that that favor was because she was going to do something that would glorify God. It wasn't going to be about praise or worship to her, but it was going to be that Jesus would be born into the world and he would be the savior of all mankind. But she had to be obedient and she had to trust. She willingly surrendered to God's plan. And so today we always ask ourselves the same question, am I continuing to surrender to God's plan and will in my life? Am I willing, as younger women and younger mothers, to take up the mantle that we heard sh even sh uh, that was shared today about our mo the older mothers, are we willing to pay the price to pray and to stand and to believe and to confess and profess that nothing is impossible with God? Can we uh, uh, rejoice in his plan for our lives even when things go don't go the way that we hope they would? Or we don't see things happening like we would like to see them? Can we still rejoice knowing that God knows the end and we only see a small glimpse of this life and what God has ahead of us? In Luke 1, 46 to 40, 55, there's one verse in there that says, my soul magnifies, it was Mary's song, and she said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. This is actually almost um, the quote that Hannah in the Old Testament in Second Samuel quoted when she was presenting her prayer and her offering to the Lord. So that speaks to me that Mary knew the scriptures. It's important for us as young women, as mothers, it really no matter what age we are, that we are consistent in our prayers because even when you feel like you don't have a whole lot to add and you're just agreeing in prayer, you're soaking in those things that God's word says. So Mary knew the scriptures and she was even proclaiming the things that Hannah had spoken. And so um, that's how we learn and how we become to know God's character is through his, his word. We need wisdom and direction to guide our families and our children. And for always, no matter what, uh, you know, where you're at, maybe like me, your grandmother now, but we need that wisdom and we need the direction of the Holy Spirit and we need the word to be alive in our hearts and in our lives. But, you know, when you look at Mary's life too, um, Mary kind of had a little bit of setbacks or whatever. Uh, it's not as though she was perfect. God's not looking for perfect mothers, perfect women but God is looking for surrendered hearts. And so um, I want to read just a, how many of you know who Dr. Ben Carson is? There's an excerpt from his book that I thought was so touching and, and applies to us as mothers when we don't feel, maybe we have insecurities, maybe we don't feel like we really have everything together. And... Um, you know, he's a renowned surgeon at John Hopkins, or he was at the time. But he tells a moving story about his mother. Mrs. Carson insisted that Ben and his brother Curtis write a book report every couple of weeks. This wasn't for school. This was for their mom. Ben and Curtis dutifully obeyed. And about the time he was in junior high, he finally realized something quite shocking. His mom couldn't read. For years, he had read books and scratched out reports, assuming that his mom was checking every word. But she didn't have a clue what he was saying. 
Now consider this. Raised by an illiterate mother, Ben grew up to be a world-famous surgeon who was featured in many articles and was the author of several books. His illiterate mom didn't twist her hands over her lack of learning and give up hope of raising intelligent boys. Instead, she gave her boys what she had, interest, accountability, and the courage to demand extra work. Let's not be give up. Let's not be frustrated at the things that we see that we don't have. But let's be thankful for the things that God has given to us, and let's instill those things into our children. God is not looking for perfection, but he is looking for connection and reflection. He is looking for our heart to be connected to his heart, and the outcome of that connection is that we will be a reflection of his heart. And that's what we want, is to reflect the heart of the Lord Jesus. And then there's two instances that are in the scripture that, well, there's a, probably more than that. You know, that it says um, that there were a lot of things that were done, but they were never recorded. But we do know some things that we re recorded about Mary's life and just even a situation of how she dealt with pressure. Remember when there was the wedding in Canaan and Jesus performed his first miracle where he turned the water into wine. Well, the scripture tells us that Mary was at the wedding and Jesus and his disciples were guests and they were invited to the wedding. And so I think because Mary was more a part of what was going on and stuff, that when they ran out of water, she felt that little uh, water. When they ran out of wine, she felt some pressure that maybe she needed to do something. Maybe there's something, something that she should do. And if you remember, she went to Jesus and she said, I need you to help. I need you to come and do this. But Jesus said to her, dear woman, which was showing respect. This wasn't a, you know, a harsh rebuke on Mary at all. But he said to Mary, dear woman, what is that to you and to me? My time to act and be revealed has not yet come. So sometimes even when we're feeling pressure and we're in a situation as a parent, we need to step back and not jump into something that possibly we can't fix. How many of you know we want to be fixers? We want to make everything work out just right, especially as, as a mother's heart. I mean, we want to be able to, um, we got to be careful we're not controlling but we really do have a heart to make sure that everything works just smoothly and is just right. But Jesus knew that he did. He went ahead and he, um, you know, turned that water into wine. But I think he felt somewhat of the pressure of the mothers. So as mothers, it's just a lesson for us to let God work in situations and not us try to get our hands involved in it because many times it ends up being not what we wanted it to be. And then the second instance is found in Matthew 12, 46 to 50. And this is where Jesus is preaching, and he's preaching to the multitudes, and the disciples are there. And here comes Mary and the brothers of Jesus' uh, brothers. And they spoke and said, you know, we need to talk to him. Basically go and interrupt him because we need to say something to him. And we know that this didn't show very much wisdom or um, it just wasn't the correct or the right time to do it. I was thinking, well, how can I apply this to my life? And I thought, well, you know, there have been times when Jim has been sharing that I know I wanted to get something in there, but it wasn't the appropriate time. It wasn't the time uh, to speak up. The Jesus brothers and Mary, they struggled somewhat with Jesus' divi divinity. And I can understand that because he, here Mary has this child that is born from her womb, but yet he's human and he's divine also. So she was working through those things, and so it is with us in our lives. We need to really uh, let the Holy Spirit lead us, give us wisdom, direct us in every situation that we face. Amen. And maybe they thought they were helping him. 
How many of you have ever felt that? <laughs> that, yeah, well, you know what? If I just do this, I'm sure this is going to be a big help. It not, doesn't always end up being what we want it to be. I'm sure that we have done some similar things with our children, our loved ones. Situations that we have handled insensitively. Made assumptions that were incorrect. Times where we have lacked wisdom. Times that we have disciplined in a manner that we knew we could have handled better. But that is why we continually need to keep our hearts in a place of surrender. Our parental guide is God's word. It's like a map that points us in the right direction. There may be detours along the journey, but we keep moving forward and we use the tools that God has given us, the tools of prayer, the tools of surrender. We keep moving on. We, keep, um, we don't let the enemy beat us up over past mistakes, over past things where we feel that we've failed. But we say, you know what, just like I appreciated so much what Jessica said about that, you know, the enemy's not going to win or we're going to keep moving on no matter what we face. And how many have you seen, because I'm, well, I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm not Catholic. Well, I think you know that. (laughs) But I'm trying to get to this point. It sounds kind of... But I've seen a lot of pictures of Mary where she's got that sacred heart right here. And um, I think Mary didn't have a sacred heart, but she had a surrendered heart. And what is the key to a surrendered heart? When the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. The meaning of the word favor in this scripture is grace. She was a recipient of grace, not a source of grace. Jesus is our grace. Jesus is the source of grace in our lives. She was a recipient of that grace, and we too are recipients of grace. We're not the source of anyone's grace. And sometimes, as mothers and parents, that's hard to face. Because if we could, we would change the hearts of our children like that. But it's that Jesus is grace, and we need to remember that, and we need to continually um, lay our children at the altar. It's dedication is not really a one-time thing. Dedication is really a daily thing when you're a parent because you know that you have that responsibility before the Lord. That's why it is the most important responsibility we have as parents is to dedicate our children to the Lord Jesus Christ and pray that they will give their hearts and lives to him. And I was so blessed by Roche's testimony about Molly. God is so good. Uh, Diana has been a big part of their life, but their mama has been a big part too. And so it's just so wonderful to see that our children, we don't know what God is going to use. Uh, if your children don't know the Lord or not serving the Lord today, we don't know what God is going to use in their lives to draw them. But we just say, go get them, Holy Spirit. And he's faithful to do that. We are to love, pray for, encourage, correct, discipline, all those things, and set a godly example for them and release them to God. Sometimes that also is a daily thing, releasing them. We know the end of Mary's story concerning Jesus, her son, but we can't forget how the cross cut deeply into Mary's heart. Despite the pain, however, Mary was there. She was a mother from the beginning and a mother to the end. A mother called by God never relinquishes her title, even if her child is rebellious, harsh, or cruel. Her heart will just not allow it. When a godly woman becomes a mother, when a man becomes a father, there is an instant realization that the day will almost certainly come when pain dominates dominates the picture. The crosses are different for every family, but frankly, the crosses usually come. There may be a divorce or disease or death. There may be harsh words and unacceptable actions. 
There may be tough love and impossible nights, but through it all, mothers called and obedient to God never relinquish the title. There is nothing like a mother's love. So in conclusion, I just want to read this cute little thing from um, Family Circus. It says, the children of Family Circus were once discussing babies. One of the young experts announced, storks don't bring babies. They come UPS. Some of the other children had different ideas, but the best was safe for last. Babies, said one of the children, are connected to their mothers by a biblical cord. <laughs> Amen. We are. We are connected to our, the next generation. We're connected to uh, our children. We're connected to our nieces, our nephews, our, uh, those that are in our sphere. We're connected by the, um, the biblical cord. God's word is our parental guide for parenting, and no parent can afford to not know what his word instructs us as parents to do. If we are going to be godly parents, mothers, fathers, etc., we must be immersed in God's word and fully committed to the calling he's given us. It's a wondrous calling. It's a calling of uh, such grace, and it's a calling that was even shared earlier that doesn't just happen when your children are in your home but as long as you are alive you st we still have the responsibility to that next generation so let's connect our hearts let's surrender our hearts to the Lord and let's allow him um, you know to see the blessings that God is providing for us through our family connections and our family units God has uh, great things I believe in store for the family I think God is restoring a lot of things um, to the believer and through the church and to the to our nation. I really think God's heart is there's a there's like a momentum, there's like a tide that is moving across our land. And so as believers, let's grab a hold of that and let's put God's word in our lives. Let's get to praying, let's get to doing the things that we know make a difference. Amen. To hear that wonderful heart and wisdom all the time we do and uh, mothers bring stability in a home they bring stability to their children and they bring stability to their husbands and men you need to let your wives speak into your life because they bring a, a word of wholeness did you hear that men and children. They bring a word of wholeness and healing and peace. Thank you, Carol. That was really great about the place of surrender. And uh, we'll have to brag on this to tell the other ones that weren't here today that they need to get on the internet to our website and listen to this. Good word. But we'd like to do something now. We'd like to invite all the ladies, all the ladies, if you would come and just stand out here in front. And Glenn, if you would join me. We want to pray a prayer blessing over every woman of God, every handmaiden of the Lord this morning. We want to pray a prayer of blessing. So just come up. Get close. And I want to remind you to go back and see Susan. Because Susan has something to give you. So Susan, you should probably be back there. So... You can get back there. Come on, all the ladies. Do we have ladies in the nursery today? Are there children in the nursery today? Oh, no, they're doing what mothers do. How do you think men would do in the nursery? <laughs> Help! 
We'd have that, we would have that number on the screen, that help number, what is it, 77 or something? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. What Carol said about the family being under attack that never before, I just, in all my years, I've never seen such warfare coming against uh, the family roles. There's just so much attack and confusion. But I want to tell you, this is our model. No matter what type of childhood you had, or you had a mother, you didn't have a mother, they were Christians or not, or whatever, God's word is freeing. It frees us. And God rewrites who we are. It's God that does it. He makes you better mothers. He makes you women of God. He makes everything he has in his original plan. When God said, I would take a woman out of the sight of man and make her her own unique person. Listen, God has, has everything you need, ladies, to continue to be a woman of God. And I want to say this. I say this every year. That it, it, it's this. You don't have to be a physical, uh, uh, give birth to a child to be a mother. Because God has given into you, my sisters, the DNA to nurture and to love and to care. That's in you. God has put that in you. And so today, we thank the Lord Jesus for you. We thank God for you. We thank what Carol said today. Even Mary had to go through a lot of setbacks. One of them I thought of was when she was prophesied by, uh, I believe it was Simeon, when uh, Jesus was dedicated, he said, a sword will pierce your soul. And I'm sure for 33 and a half years she wondered what that meant. Well, that sword was seeing her son die on the cross. But there's swords that pierce our soul of the things that happen in life. But I want you to know that the grace that Carol talked about is not in a human being. It's the grace is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we just want to pray a prayer of blessing over you today. And I want to say this. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being the women of God that you are. Thanks for loving and caring and sharing and correcting and long-suffering and patience and enduring. And thank you because it means so much. Men, is this true? Come on, guys. So as, I, as Glenn and I are praying together, I'd like for you to stretch out. In fact, come closer. Come up. I want you guys to come up closer. Ladies, can you come closer? I want the men to be be behind you. Come, just get behind these ladies. Just get closer, if you would. Ethan, that means you too. Come on, this is your mother and your grandmother up here. Your sisters in the Lord. Come on, just stand up here closer. We are blessed. Men, we are blessed. Because of our moms, but because we are surrounded with godly examples. Father, we speak a blessing now over every woman of God that's represented here. From the youngest to the oldest, Lord, we speak a blessing now in Jesus' name. And Lord, that grace that we heard about this morning, we just say, more grace, women of God. More grace, women of God. More grace, women of God. And Lord, we pray a blessing over their physical bodies now. Some of them in this, this line, God, are physically suffering with a lot of things. God, we're praying for your healing touch right now. We speak the name of Jesus to the physical ailment of our body. We pray in Jesus' name for healing. We claim healing. We believe healing. God, if we heard the scripture that was read this morning of what the angel said, for nothing shall be impossible with God. We pray for healing right now. We pray, God, for their spirits to become alive, that every one of them, uh, every one of these women would know how greatly they are loved, how greatly they are loved in heaven, and how greatly, Lord, that they are loved even on this earth by even those that are around them. God, we pray, let the revelation of your love be upon every sister here now in Jesus' name. And God, if there's any sense of guilt or shame or confusion, we say in the name of Jesus, be free of that. Be free. You're not a prisoner of your past. You're not a prisoner of your past. Be free 
and be at peace in the name of Jesus. Know that in heaven that the Lord knows you. He knows your name. And I want to, I, I want to tell you, ladies, this was just in my heart this morning. I felt God put it there. Your prayers are heard in heaven. And your prayers have come up as a memory before God. And there, there are those that are alive because of your prayers. There are those who have had the, have, that have had the enemy push back because of your prayers and your warfare. There are those that have learned about the Father's heart because of your love and your long-suffering and your gentleness and your forgiveness. Because of your heart, God has been able to make himself known to your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and even beyond. Generations will be touched because of you touching heaven. I want to say it again. Generations will be touched because you have touched heaven with your prayers and your love. Lord, we bless every one of them. We pray physical strength. We pray, God, a quickened mind. We pray, God, that their spirits would be full of joy. Lord, may we all be like Jessica, just so full of joy, just so full of the vision of what God has done in her life. God, we speak that to every woman of God now. We bless them. God, we pray that you'll help them. Many of them work jobs and come home, and they've got husbands and kids and houses. Oh, God, how do they do it? God, give them grace. Give them strength. Give them the ability. And God, I pray, and we pray together, that, Lord, that the revelation of the cross would always be before them because it is with the cross that we find that we are being changed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. From strength to strength. Victory we speak over them now. The handmaidens of the Lord. Victory now. Filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Word of God. And they will not be intimidated by no one because the Lord their God lives within them and he is for them. If God be for them, who can be against them? We speak that now in Jesus' name. And we bless them now in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. So you hug each other and you go back and see Susan. God bless you. Have a wonderful Mother's Day today. God bless you. Amen. We'll see everybody next.